So what's special about Pearl? It's, it's a large scale, double blind, randomized, placebo controlled, what's called a phase four trial. Um, phase four just meaning that, you know, it's already an F it's an FDA approved medication, so we're not looking for FDA approval, it's already been approved. We're just looking to kind of add data to the drug. Um, and, and it's gonna be one of the largest, if actually the largest so far, a uh, human aging trial on, um, on rapamycin. Um, and, it's, and it's groundbreaking in, in, in many ways, and we'll talk about those. So we're gonna be doing it in, in multiple phases. Uh, so far, we've developed the plan for phase one and phase two. Um, so phase one, we'll be looking at four dosing schedules. We'll be looking at eff efficacy and safety evaluation. It's gonna include 300 participants plus 75 placebo. Uh, phase two, we'll probably remove the placebo, we'll pick the best dose, and we'll increase the, uh, uh, the number of participants up to 1,000 or more. We may, we may open the door up depending on demand and, and, and our capacity and things like that. Um, we've, we've scoured the literature and we've come up with fair, four carefully selected dosage, uh, low dose, medium dose, and what's considered to be you know, a high dose. Um, now, I just wanna say that, that all these doses are well below the dose that are, that's used for um, uh, you know, transplant patients. Uh, and, um, and, and it needs to be intermittent because you need, you need time to recover um, you know, recovery from this calorie restricted mimetic. You don't, like I said, if you, if you, if you activate or so if you inhibit mTOR all the time, um, then you get an immunosuppression uh, and you don't want that obviously. Um, but so if you do a pulse dosing at, at what we think would be the right dose, uh, one of these, one or more of these doses will, will hopefully turn out to be the right dose. Um, then, then you get the anti-aging effect without immunosuppression. In fact, if anything, we expect to see a uh, um, uh, immune boosting effect where, where you'll actually be more resistant to infection. Um, <clears throat> we have extensive inclusion and exclusion criteria. You can look at our um, um, uh, clinicaltrials.gov uh, for a full list, and we'll also be publishing this summer as well. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, our, our, primary, our primary endpoint, it's going to be, it's, it needs to be a clinical endpoint, so we're looking at visceral fat as determined by DEXA scan. Secondary endpoints, we'll be looking at things like um, bone density, uh, adverse effects. Um, uh, and then there's several objectives. So in addition to the endpoints, we have objectives for the trial. Um, so our, our primary objective, or one of our objectives, is to look at the safety profile of, um, uh, of, of these doses of rapamycin, um, you know, tease out to see if, if there's any, um, you know, side effects that stick out, if there's any particular dose that has less side effects or more side effects. Uh, and we'll also do a six month interim analysis. So uh, if the data looks good at six months, we may actually cut the phase one trial short and move on to phase two and enroll more people. Um, and uh, we'll be looking, you know, our first objective, we'll be looking at things like CBC, CMP, things like that. Um, we're looking at health surveys, uh, looking for side effect profiles. Objective two is a long-term efficacy. Um, now, obviously, we can't wait, you know, 20, 30, 40 years for diseases of ages, aging to show up. So we're looking at various different biomarkers uh, and um, uh, as well as, you know, um, some health surveys to help us uh, determine whether rapamycin is actually helping with the aging process. And there's been a lot of work. I mean, we're, we're not the first. You know, there's been a lot of work on, 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 on looking at bio, various different biomarkers um, to help uh, with the to help uh, determine age, biological age. Um, <clears throat> objective two is efficacy. Again, we talked about you know we talked about that. Looking at various different uh, markers here, we'll talk a little bit more about those markers in a minute. You know, there's the the, the DNA methylation clock uh, on the Illumina Epic chip. Um, you know, um, Dr. Horvath, he's very famous for his clock. Um, using the uh, CPG uh, methylation. Um, Dr. Levine, uh, Morgan Levine, um, uh, she's come up with a, a way to kind of couple the uh, DNA, uh, the mid DNA methylation with the uh, blood panel um, and has come up with this um, uh, DNA M pheno age. Um, and we'll be, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be looking to, to include that as well. Um, mTOR assessment, uh, we're looking at different ways to uh, actually assess the mTOR and autophagy pathways. Um, we're looking at uh, including microbiome uh, because microbiomes, you know, is it, the, the bacteria in our gut is more of an organ rather than just bystander. And there's a lot of uh, promise that if you, if you uh, improve the microbiome, then you can improve uh, somebody's long-term health. Um, objective three is to help roll out uh, the rapamycin therapy on a much broader scale using our established telemedicine platform. We've gotten a lot of um, inquiries about including rapamycin on our on our um, uh, telemedicine platform. 
Um, unfortunately, unlike metformin, which has got a very long, you know, very well established uh, uh, safety record and, and well established saf uh, safety profile, um, drugs like rapamycin and other experimental, uh, more expensive experimental therapies haven't really been studied as extensively. Uh, and so need need this type of trial uh, and and more trials to in order to um, to to safely roll it out for 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 um, to, to healthy individuals. So that's what our that's what our objective is to study it, assess it, figure out what, what the best dose is because there's no there's really been no comparison on on, on human dosage for longevity, and then roll it out uh, using our telemedicine platform. Um, and like like I mentioned before, we we operate in all 50 states, and we hope to expand that to, to other countries in the future.